Hi folks, my name is Mac, it's my precious wife Nadine, and we've been asked to talk on boundaries with regarding parenting, with regards to parenting, and it's all part of the Headstrong series. So I'm going to start and say that even Jesus gave us boundaries. He says, um, let our yes be yes and our no be no. And he, and he even speaks to children directly, giving them boundaries, saying that children should be obedient to God as it pleases Him. Sorry, children should be obedient to their parents as that pleases the Lord. And that is why we're busy with obedience training. That is why we teach them boundaries. Unfortunately, our, our relationship with boundaries is not all very good because we treat boundaries like we treat the three-year-old that keeps asking why. So if, if, you, um, if you have a toddler, you know that they go, why? But why? But why? And eventually you just ignore it or you go because I say so. And that is often how we um, treat boundaries too. We just ignore it for too long or we just go because I say so. And that doesn't teach our kids how, when and why and how to implement boundaries. Um, we need to train our kids to have boundaries so that they can, that they can get to know between right and wrong and they need to know if it's wrong how serious is it and we need to implement um, consequences so we can't just leave our children to decide what to eat and when to sleep because will they ever sleep and will they ever eat healthy food mm -hmm. and the Bible even warns us and says that our hearts are uh, deceitful so we can't we can't rely on our children to implement boundaries um, Jesus even put boundaries in for the oceans. He said, thus far and no further, and it obeyed. And we need to have that attitude when we implement boundaries in our households. So unfortunately, in the baby years, our kids are scared of discipline. But in the teenage years, we're scared of the child. And that is when we have this attitude of we just ignore it or we shouldn't speak about it. So please bear in mind that there's seasons in parenting and we need to take into account the seasons of parenting. Yeah. So what you've implemented for your three-year-old, you will not implement for your 13-year-old. So how do you do it? I would suggest that you, we, we keep saying it takes a village to raise a child. So get your village going, go sit with your village, get the input, be accountable. Where have I gone wrong? How do I do this? Where do I do that? Um, and, and, the, the secret of accountability is like when we gave our lives to Jesus. It's the Word of God says there's a new identity, but with a new identity there are new rules. Mm -hmm. So with every new phase in our lives, there would be new rules. And people that know the rule, those rules, we need to check in with them and they can help us and give us input. Um, most of our generation grew up, kids should be seen and not heard. And I think what happened is the pendulum swung the other side that we felt kids should be heard and not seen. And, um, and then we have loose boundaries. Then we never know what are the rules, which are the rules to play by. Um, and parents need to take charge. With taking charge, it, it doesn't mean it's harsh. It means there's love. We still value the child. This child still feels significant. But the, we cannot focus that children only feel significant because then we are not doing what Jesus has called us to do. And um, we need to make sure that our children know that there are consequences. Um, and what are the consequences? You need to ask, what are the consequences? What are the rules? Um, so I have a few things. Um, I have five points that can help you in mm. how to how to start implementing boundaries. I think the first question would be, what is negotiable and what is non-negotiable? Like for us, respect would be non-negotiable. Um, whether it's friends, family, people you don't like, people in authority that you, that you don't like that much. For us, it's non-negotiable mm. that our kids, uh, and even us, should show respect at all time. Mom and dad should be on the same page. Then again, when you're a single parent, be on the same page of, uh, uh, as your village, whoever that might be. Check in with them, get their input. What have you gone wrong? When they babysit, what are the rules? What are the consequences? And be consistent uh, with your consequences. Mm. Um, 
I think with consequences, we need to say, often we create an atmosphere where we go, no one ever eats pudding in our house. Heaven forbid, we need pudding in life. But um, we need, uh, we can't just make blanket statements because it makes consequences too harsh. And our children always feel we're going to fail it in any case. And that's not clear boundaries. Boundaries are based on principles. So I've made a little list that can help you to implement the consequences. So I'm going to give it to you. Um, there are six points. The first one is disrespect. So you can make three columns. The far left is disrespect, the middle one is scripture, and the far right then would be you going to sit and go, what will be the consequences if this is not implemented in my family? Disrespect is the offense. The scripture is Exodus 20 verse 12. So if disrespected is, um, is overstepped as a boundary in your household, what will the consequence be? The second one is lying. So the lying scripture is Proverbs 14 verse 25. And then again, you need to go sit down. What are the consequences? The third one is fighting. Colossians 3 verse 15. What are your consequences when they are fighting, arguing? I think there's a difference bef between fighting and kids fight because they, uh, they want to win or lose. Um, they haven't learned um, that, that it's just an obstacle, it's just an argument. Uh, the fourth one is uncon uncontrollable anger, and the scripture is Proverbs 29 verse 11. What are the consequences if your child is out of control and angry? Arguing, Pro Proverbs 18 verse 2. And again, what will the consequences be if your child keeps arguing, keeps bickering, keep back chatting? Mm. Uh, and then the last one is disobedience, Ephesians 6 verse 1. What, are the, what, what is the consequences according to the Bible um, when there's disobedience, there's punishment. And follow through with your consequences and don't feel guilty to follow through. So let me give you this example on follow through of consequences. If you say to your kids, we're going to go to town and if there's fighting in the car, um, we are going to, uh, we're not going to have ice cream. So this is the consequence you're going to implement beforehand. You're going to say to them, if you're good today, we'll all have ice cream. So if they're not good, you're going to announce to them, we're not having ice cream today. But, moms, specifically I speak to you, you will go to McDonald's and buy yourself an ice cream. Because you weren't fighting with anyone. Hopefully you, will not, you were not fighting with anyone. Um, so your kids can learn. Mom knows what she's doing. Dad knows what he's doing. Um, we have strict boundaries. And sometimes I'm going to miss out when I am not obedient. Mm -hmm. um, and then always, but always follow up with love and affirmation, but not in such a way that it cancels out the discipline. And then over to Mac. Thank you. So I'm just going to share a few thoughts regarding boundaries to create an antidote and make our kids robust against the yeast of the world, you know, uh, the way the world can affect them and pull them aside and take them on a wrong track. So the first point I'd like to discuss is performance. The effect of speaking performance language in a house. So how do we speak performance language in a house? We compare our kids with other kids. We compare our kids with their siblings. Uh, we compare our kids in school related activities, you know, better swimmer, better tennis player, better academic performance person or another performance child. And our, child, our children grow up with the idea of um, I'm only valued if I can perform. I'm only good enough if I can reach this goal or this, or this, um, this pinnacle. If I can only reach this certain point, then I am good enough. Um, so performance is, is, a, is a thing that often we as parents have already. Uh, we grew up with it and unknowingly, subconsciously, we talk the language of performance and we equate value to performance in front of our kids when we talk about other people and the way we come across to them. So that's a, a boundary we have to recognize and say we cannot talk this lingo any longer. We cannot carry on in this way or comparing and feeding, unfortunately, the gremlin of performance. Because that will always make your child feel he or she is not good enough. 
Then the next thing is status. What's the effect of status? Do we speak, do we have boundaries that hinder status to be an important thing? Or do we subconsciously talk about status? So how do we explain status? Do we praise wealth, for example, in our discussions at home? Do we say, oh, look at that amazing house. Oh, look at that amazing car. Wow, I want that car. Wow, I want that boat. Wow, I want to go on that holiday. That is creating the, uh, the idea that we can only be happy when these things are present in our lives. We can only be fulfilled and competent, or not competent, content when these things are present in our life. So nice cars, homes, etc., as I've said. Um, and we have to work against our, the world's idea of success because the world's idea of success are these amazing things. What's God's idea of success? Character growth, loving your neighbor, loving your father and your mother, loving Jesus above all else. And, and character growth is also laying down your life, preferring someone else above you. I mean, when you love your neighbors, you love yourself. We can't even, we struggle to love our brothers and sisters in Christ as we love ourselves. And there the, 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 the mark is even higher. In scripture it says, love each other as Christ has loved us. And Christ loved us more than he loved himself. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, that, that, that would be success. That should be the talk of success in family. That's a very important boundary. And um, so we have to undo it in ourselves as parents and go meditate on scripture, do self-talk, uh, go talk to our spouses. If you don't have a spouse, then talk like Nadine said. Talk to some person of authority to, uh, that is also influencing your kids and say to them, where do you see where I speak where, where I elevate status, where I elevate performance, where I elevate success with wrong motives, success based on the wrong route or the wrong perspective. Um, then another thing, our children's self-worth cannot be based on the amount of money they earn, on how good or not good they look, to how, how physically attractive they are, or on the talents that they have, or the lack of talents that they have, or on their ability to be the live wire of a party, um, or on their level of intelligence. And if any of that communication comes, we break those boundaries in our communication with our kids, then they think they only have worth if they measure up in one of these five points. Mm -hmm. That we have to undo, that we have to stop and go and, 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 and make conscious decisions, lists, and say, we cannot say, we cannot compare our child in these areas with these levels of so-called worldly self-worth. The last point that I'd like to mention is the power and effect of gossip. And Nadine touched a bit on it when she spoke about authority, submitting to authority. So do we gossip at home about so-and-so? We can, we can call it nicer words. Do we slightly hint, oh, did you see that guy's uh, clothing? Did you see this? Did you, have you noticed that? And, and I've been guilty of it. My wife too. I think I've been more guilty of that. So I've had to work on myself in that area uh, because I like teasing and I've had to curb my teasing. Uh, so yeah, don't talk negatively about others in front of your kids because then you're lying the sourdough, the yeast of the world of discussing others. Always speak with honor, respect, even, and there's nothing good to say about someone or the people in authority then say nothing and say, and if the kids come home from discussing someone or a teacher or whatever, say to them, you know what? I hear what you say and I, I, w- I actually agree with you, but I don't want to discuss it. Let's rather pray for that person. So then you bring the culture, the boundary of scripture and loving family, godly family into your home and with your kids. And I know that, Implementing boundaries can be very hard and we can so focus on how to do it and what to do it But it's the way we think that need to change the the scripture says do not conform to the ways of the world Renew the way that we think and that is why it is so important to sit with other parents and give each other input sit with the Word of God and renew the way you think not only implementing the new boundaries, the new rules, um, the new identities that you want to see manifesting in your household, but renew the way that you think according to the Word of God. 